we're going to start this meeting, before we start the meeting, we always ask our city clerk to read the quote of the week. Thank you, Mayor. Integrity is telling myself the truth, and honesty is telling the truth to other people. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Call the 20th meeting of regular, 20th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Born. Here. Bauk. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Excuse. Kittleson. Excuse. Clyunas. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Here. And Wangeman. Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. This time I'd ask everyone rise for a Pledge of Allegiance and Troop 804 will lead us. Come on in, gentlemen. There we go. Who's going to do the pledge? Who's going to do it? Why don't you come here and you can use my mic. Just talk. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Troop 804. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hamm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I <clears throat> make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a resignation from the Wellness Committee by uh, Officer Bill Adams. I ask to a motion to accept and file. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to accept and file the, the resignation. Second. Motion and second. <clears throat> Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. And a resignation from Joanne Decker, uh, president of local 1564 City Hall workers, advising she's stepping down from the group health insurance committee and recommends Tracy Holton take her place. In motion to accept and file. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to accept and file the resignation. Second. Motion and second to accept and file. Under discussion. <clears throat> there being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And there are two letters from Andrew Hopp advising that he's uh, resigning as a member of the Board of Contractors, Examiners, and the Architectural Review Board, both effective immediately. One of the requirements for the position, uh, for holding the position in, in these uh, committees is that the person be a, a licensed contractor. Uh, Mr. Hopp has informed me that he will no longer be a licensed contractor, so this is why he resigned. Need a motion to accept and file both? President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I make a motion to accept and file both resignations. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignations accepted. Appointment. I hereby <clears throat> submit the following appointment for your confirmation. Rebecca Tellen to be considered for appointment to the Wellness Committee to fill the unexpired term of William Adams, whose term expires 430-09, signed by the mayor. This slides over. This uh, appointment is made pursuant to uh, Mr. Adams' uh, recommendation. And Tracy Holton to be considered for appointment to the Group Health Insurance Committee to fill the unexpired term of Joanne Decker, whose term expires 430-09, signed by the mayor. Thank you. This slides over to this appointment is made pursuant to the recommendation of the person vacating the committee uh, position. And there are a number of appointments to the Business Improvement District. Cleo Messner, Randy Schwerer, Caitlin Bratz, Greg Herring, Don Seifert, and Kim Conway, all uh, to expire 9-11. 2011, signed by the mayor. These appointments lie over and are made pursuant to the recommendation of Dick Meyer, of manager of the bid. <clears throat> Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is public forum. Madam City Clerk. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, the mayor's allowing me just a couple of minutes before we start public forum, just so that the public is aware of how we handle public forum through what I call the election cycle. 
The election cycle is going on right now for the primary elections and the spring elections this year. And we have the public calling in to speak on public forum, which is very important. However, what we do during this time is in my office, when you do call in for public forum, we will suggest to you that it would not be appropriate for you to do any sort of campaigning, either direct or indirect. Um, reason being, we have 11 people that are running for different offices during this cycle. And if one candidate perhaps gets up and does some campaigning, either direct or indirect, then all 11 candidates have the right to get up and do their five minutes of direct or indirect campaigning. So my staff and myself feel that it's important that we just let the public know during this time that if you could keep your comments and things, we're not restricting what you say, but not using candidates' names. And I think everybody knows, you know, they know the procedure. But we just want to let you know ahead of time that that's how we are handling it during this cycle. So just so you're all aware, we welcome you calling in and signing up. But we would ask that you follow those guidelines that we're offering. And if there are any questions, just give me a call at my office. And the three people speaking tonight were very gracious and understand this. And can, will all the people coming forward will continue to follow these guidelines. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, first on the list would be Henry Capitillo. Henry, can I get your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street. That's the town of Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. OK. The uh, New Century Dictionary defines openness as the state of quality of being open in any sense, often absence of concealment or reserve, for example. I will answer him as clearly as I am able and with great openness. It defines open-minded as having or showing a mind open or accessible to new arguments or ideas. For example, as the committee sit open-mindedly, listened with laudable impar impartiality. How do you think these two definitions apply to this administration? Do you think that the administration has been open and candid with information to the people of Sheboygan when it per pertains to how it governs? Is this administration accessible to new arguments or ideas? My observation on the openness and transparency of this administration is that it seems to pick and choose when it wants to be open and readily disseminate information to the general public on pending issues. How many times has some important issue come before this council and been voted on with very minimal disclosure, discussion or disclosure. I have sat in this council chambers and have heard such comments as, this is the first time I have seen this document. It was just added to my package tonight. How can we expect to vote on this document tonight? I do not feel I have enough information about this issue. We should take time to review this document and it should be sent back to the committee or committee of the whole. Why do we have to vote on this tonight? Why can it, can't it be held over for the next council meeting so we can get more information and make a more informed decision? Why has this administration been so secretive and selective on who is given information about various things that are to come before this council? I think that the number was one reason is control of information. This administration has continuously wanted to absolutely control what comes before this council. By not providing full disclosure and limiting access to information on various items that come before the council, it limits discussions on issues. It is my perception that some older persons may even feel uncomfortable opposing what is being proposed because of their lack of information on what is being proposed. Another tactic of this administration, whether it is planned or it is not, is to make older persons look to see as if they are basically not aware of the information that is in front of them. And in doing so, keeps them from speaking out. By doing this, they limit the opposition argument and also deter other council members from opposing their opposing viewpoint. By trying to control everything that this administration has lost a, a substantial amount of support from the general public and other city officials and other elected officials, 
Another tactic of this administration is to try to crush its opposition to whatever it wants to accomplish. I do not know how many times I've heard from numerous individuals that say that they are literally afraid of this administration and what will they will do if they speak out. I heard from one alderman who said that some, pers some person would not put a yard sign out in their lawn because of what this administration would do to them for supporting that candidate. I also heard from another individual who was a candidate that said that he was surprised that so many people said that they would support him and would even vote for him, but would not do, public, would not do it publicly because of what retaliation this administration would take. Why is that so many people in the community feel threatened to speak publicly about this administration? Is it simple when you see how it has handled its critics? Look at how he labeled the individuals who wanted to recall him as racists and bigots. Look at how he has treated the police department over his administration. Look at how he handled Ms. Jenny Resling, the individual who had a link to the police department and who is now suing the city of Sheboygan and some other city officials. Look at how he handled the issue of the bar owner on Indiana Avenue and apparently he is looking at legal action against the city also. Look at how he has treated our organization and me personally, being gaveled at a council meeting for a long, t and for a long time responding to my comments at the public forum. Look at how many city department heads have left the city over this administration's tenure. Look at how he viewed the former talk show host, Nick Reed, who lost his job at WHBL. I think people should be able to speak publicly. Excuse me, Henry, would you like your additional minute? Yes. Go ahead. I think people should be able to speak publicly and even criticize this administration without fear of any retaliation. What a sad state of affairs when individuals cannot speak out in this great land that it calls the home of the free and one of its main foundations is the Bill of Rights that professes to protect individual rights. How many brave Americans have died for our freedoms? Please do not be afraid to speak out and voice your con concerns and opinions by, si by staying silent. You empower this type of negative behavior. Thank you very much for Thank the time. You. Oh, we're in uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, despite the, um, the warning, perhaps, I think that was pretty clear a political uh, commentary. Um, and I think that, therefore, with the warning said, we do need to allow uh, those parties involved in that mayor or ICE to respond if they so desire. It is a, um, <clears throat> a very delicate situation for me because I am running for reelection. And there is talk in the community that these kinds of tactics are going to be used against me to try to get me to react. I will not react. Again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Anybody can get up here and say anything they want, whether it's true or not. Saying it does not make it true. It never has, it never will. I will not be tricked into reacting to this type of political trickery. Alderman Rinsleis, thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate it, it's very neutral. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just uh, would like to say I am also a candidate for mayor and that uh, Mr. Capitello's uh, comments are his own and have nothing to do with myself or any of my supporters. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Brian. Next. Richard Hartman. Richard, can I get your home address, please? 24. 23 North 24th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. One is enough, I think. <laughs> Go for it. Buzzwords are a dime a dozen, and catchphrases are a dime a dozen, and seldom do any of them survive these fast changing times. One exception is micromanaging. The term micromanaging is generally applied when a private citizen shows interest, forms an opinion, and speaks out on an issue 
that an appointed or elected official appears to have mishandled or ignored completely. Micromanaging is often thought of as meddling, but the fact that there are so many committees formed to handle the city's business disproves that idea. Committees are a form of micromanaging, and they work, but only if the members of that committee actively participate. On tonight's agenda, you will address an issue that appears to have been badly mishandled. According to the Sheboygan Press, the filling of the position of temporary mayoral administrative officer has a number of flaws. And upon careful reading of that January 16th press article, a few more questions arise that are not clearly defined, but demand answers as well. I urge all of you to get involved in this issue, not just a few of you who have come forward to question these practices that cannot continue if city hall or city government is to expect any degree of respectability. Thank you. Thank you. And last on the list will be Tom Bowers. Tom, could I have your home address, please? 2120 uh, North 36th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to uh, address you tonight. Uh, this was just brought to my attention within the last two or three days. Tonight you will be, uh, I believe, voting on uh, and your consent agenda 20.4 and then after uh, coming to the meeting I see 20-7. Uh, this is in reference to the property at 926 Broughton Drive. I urge you to postpone this until further study can be done. This property was originally assessed, or not assessed, but was for sale for $350,000. The city is proposing a sale for $160,000. When I looked at the city budget, the budget indicated, uh, allocated $350,000 in the budget. Where is this $190,000 going to come from if we sell this property? Now, it's also proposed, the, I believe it will have to be uh, rezoned from its current zoning. And the rezoning would be for a restaurant. Sheboygan does not need another restaurant. We don't need another bar. We don't need any more real estate agents, and we don't need any more insurance agents. Therefore, the neighbors also have indicated that they are against this property being rezoned. I have yet talked to anyone down there that is for this. Granted, I've only talked to three or four people, but no one is in, wants this changed. Now, if this could be taken out of and, and uh, some discussion on this tonight, I would like some answers as to, first of all, where the $190,000 is going to come from. With this in mind, I urge you to take time and take this back to committee and uh, look at it once again. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And that's it. That's it? That's it. Thank you very much to all the people addressed to council tonight. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Items 20-1 through 20-21. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> First, I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Alderman Ray Fleisch. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, no separate vote this time. Just a question regarding 20-4. Uh, if those answer, 
the questions that was posed recently by Mr. Tambowers could be answered regarding the budget. Um, I guess the, the further question I would like to ask the, uh, the committee regarding the sale of the property would be if we don't sell it for what we have, where would we get the $350,000 instead of the 190000 then as well? So if someone from finance can answer that question, please. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Uh Unless you want to, Mayor. Go ahead, Alderman okay. And please, Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the 350000 was for a number of properties, not just the one. So it may say a sale property, but it makes up several different parcels the city is in the process of selling. And to add to that, um, I believe everyone knows what the uh, real estate market is. There weren't a lot of people interested in anything right now, and even if there were, the banks aren't interested in talking to you. It's a, it's a very tough time. Uh, Paulette Anders and her team exercise good judgment and good thinking in, in, in uh, this whole process. This is something that did not occur uh, in a week. It took several months to, uh, to work through. Thank you, Alderman Gisher, for pointing that out. Appreciate that. Alderman Bout, next, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just going to add to that that um, also, shoot, I lost my thought. Um, two properties, it was Little Red Schoolhouse and this one. Oh, and the cash inflow uh, was expected to be in 2008. So his question about how we're going to solve that in the 2009 budget, it's already done. We solved it in the 2008 budget. So this will be unexpected inflow for 2009. Excellent point. Thank you, Alderman Bout. Any other discussion? <laughs> On four. Alderman Renfleisch? Okay. Thank you. We will call a roll. Boren? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Balk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Renfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions uh, 2022 and 2023 to be referred. Reports of Officers 2, 2024 by the City Attorney stating that the prospective purchaser of Lot 39 in the City's Northfield Meadow subdivision is withdrawing his offer as he has found a new home on the south side to purchase and advises that the Council file Resolution Number 181-0809 and not accept the purchase and sell agreement. Uh, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that agenda item number 24 be accepted and filed, and agenda item number 2025 be filed. Is there a second? Second. Se second? Under discussion. I believe we talked about this last time, and everybody should have. Okay. This will require a voice uh, vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2026 through 2039. to 2039, I'm sorry, to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 2040 by Alderman Montemayor, providing for the hiring of nine police officers under the hiring freeze. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none, please call, I'm sorry. Alderman Minfleisch. Uh, again, just for the public's sake, if we could discuss um, under the hiring freeze why we're hiring nine officers. Um, just for the public, I had questions regarding this one. Uh, so if you could explain that, please. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the nine officers are, are part of the early retirement package that we work through the police department. Uh, the senior officers in the, in the police department uh, came forward with a plan that allowed us to redistribute resources and put more officers on the street. Okay. Any other uh, discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2041 by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, and Verhassel, allowing the temporary mayoral assistant, mayoral administrative officer to continue employment until a human resources director is hired and, the, and working at the city. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second under discussion. 
Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am not uh, uh, for this resolution. Uh, first thing I, I would like to do is propose an, admen an amendment. Um, the third whereas down, whereas the council and the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors were considering merging the two HR offices, offices under the county's umbrella and the next whereas, the county notified the council in late September that they would not be able to accommodate the merger of the two HR departments. I would like to uh, eliminate that language from the resolution. Um, it seems to me that uh, in order to uh, keep on a friendly basis with our friends at the county, this, this situation tonight has nothing to do with the county. And uh, therefore, I propose that, uh, I, I, that I make an amendment that we remove that language from it. Any motion, Alderman Ryan? I make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion on the amendment only. Alderman Bauck on the amendment, sir? No? I'll hold the light for you. Any other discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Huayunas? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Born Aye. and Bulk. Aye. 13 ayes, one no. Motion carries. Alderman Ryan, any motion to put the resolution upon his passage as amended? I will make that uh, motion to put the resolution upon his passage as amended for discussion purposes. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion. Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to urge my colleagues to vote no on this tonight for lots and lots of reasons. I'm sure we're going to have a good discussion about this. Primarily, what this comes down to is the fact that this person, it was the will of this council uh, a few months ago to hire this person to assist the office of the mayor uh, when uh, interim director Susan Hart was needed more full time, more of her efforts needed in, uh, in HR. Uh, it was the express will of this body that this person be hired for 600 hours uh, for the express reason as we discussed on this floor uh, with everybody here that to not have to pay benefits and to not have to pay Wisconsin Retirement Fund. It was a Schedule X, if you will recall. And under Schedule X, uh, the purpose of that was to get the Office of the Mayor some help for 600 hours and not to exceed that. Well, for various reasons, uh, some processes were missed and some mistakes were made, and we've been assured that the people who made those mistakes have been, um, have been punished appropriately by the Office of the Mayor. We've been made that assurance. So given that, what it boils down to for the citizenry is um, the office of the mayor uh, received 900 hours of help uh, from this person who, by all reports, this city employee did a very, very good job. This is not about that city employee whatsoever. It's about uh, the fact, for me anyway, and, and hopefully for you, it is about the fact that as legislators, we get to vote on the rules, and then as department heads, they're supposed to follow the rules. And this department had allowed this employee to work 50% more hours, 300 more hours than what this council uh, approved. And uh, as Alderman Gisha said in his, uh, his quote in the paper, if, if all department heads did that, we'd have budget chaos. And so um, uh, as I understand it, we may be close to getting, uh, getting a full-time uh, HR person. Uh, and even if we're not, uh, it doesn't matter for me. I think it's time to, uh, to vote no on this tonight. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Alderman Bolt. President Hanna. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I went back and reviewed the salary and grievance meeting where this was discussed, and it was clear uh, from the aldermen that were there uh, that when this employee got close to 600 hours, we were supposed to be talked to, and that didn't happen. Uh, so I do, I share Alderman Bauck's concerns that we had a, uh, we had a communication breakdown, and that's just unfortunate. Thank you, President Hanna. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I agree that um, the mayoral assistant worked more hours than we had originally authorized. At the salary and grievance meeting, when we authorized the 600 hours, we also did say the words that when we got close to the 600, we would need to bring it back to council again to increase the hours. Not necessarily that you would do it, but we would bring it back to council. That did not happen. However, the work is still continuing. And it may continue for another three weeks or a month and a half. And I think we still need to have all of that work completed. And I, I, I definitely will support 
continuing with the mayoral assistant until the HR director is hired and the former mayoral assistant is back upstairs doing the mayoral assistant job. That work is not going to disappear simply because we say you, we're not going to pay for it. Thank you. Alderman uh, Vice President Gordon. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> First of all, we, shouldn't even have, we should not even have to be dealing with this, with this document tonight if the procedures would have been handled correctly. And I guess the uh, straw that broke the camel's back as far as this whole issue with me was the document that went from HR down to uh, the Finance Committee requesting that uh, the employee be given Wisconsin retirement, which was necessary because the employee went over 600 hours. Also on that document was a request to give that employee health insurance. And I find it very hard to believe that that was a clerical error as it's said in the paper. Uh, and I, I give uh, the employee in the finance department, Nancy Buss, a lot of credit for not signing on and doing the right thing in this matter. So uh, I, don't like, I don't like that any of this happened and we should not even be dealing with this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Holman Brassel, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, I just wanted to point out my name is on the document here, but uh, obviously it was drafted after the committee decision. I did support it in committee. I'll point out that my support was paper thin on this. Uh, I do disagree with the language that's put on this document. I don't think there is a good reason to support the decision other than what it came down to me personally was that I felt like we were punishing the wrong person for what happened here. We're punishing an employee for something that one of our city employees, one of our department heads, a mistake that they had made. So it came down to me to something as simple as that. Again, my support on this is paper thin and I'm, I'm curious to hear more discussion on it. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I'm curious to have, hear some more discussion on this too. Uh, like Alderman Bourne, I'm not particularly pleased that we're addressing this tonight. This is an administrative matter that should have been handled properly by the department head, by the department. Um, when um, Alderman Surik brought in the letter stating that the employment offer said 600 hours, no benefits, and suddenly we're at 925 hours, that was shocking to me, just absolutely shocking, particularly because I was at that salary and grievance meeting a while back where this was discussed. I actually reviewed that meeting today with, uh, with a couple of aldermen uh, and and it just reinstated to me that the message was clear. It, uh, it was clearly understood by HR. It was clearly understood by seller and grievance. And I believe it was clearly understood by the mayor's office because the meetings took place regarding this issue. So I'm voting no on this issue. And it's not because of the money. Usually I get involved with money things. It's not because of the money. We hired a specific person for a specific amount of time for a specific amount of money with no benefits. All that went in the trash. So we're the authority here. We're the sole authority for the citizens of Sheboygan. They entrust us that our authority will then be respected. In this case, I think the citizens were disrespected because our authority was not followed. And I think there has to be consequences to that. And the consequences are that no administrative assistant job has to be done some way, then somebody's going to have to figure a way to do it. Uh, if, and, uh, Without consequences, we have no teeth. So I urge uh, my colleagues to vote no on this. Thank you. Any more discussion? As a uh, confirmation to Alderman Bauck's uh, comment that, uh, that I've handled this administratively and appropriately, you are correct, sir. Also, I conduct my third and final interview on Wednesday for the HR position. There's three very good, qualified, capable candidates. I will be making a decision on one of them Friday, and that person will be notified Friday, and it will come as an appointment for confirmation to the council on the first uh, Monday of February. Okay? Alderman Bout, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one more comment for uh, Alderperson Verhassel. Uh, as he struggles with what's the right thing to do as far as punishing people and, and this employee. Um, I struggled with that myself and the, where I kind of came down was this, this person was hired 
their offer letter said 600 hours, so they could have you know, planned ahead for 600 hours worth of employment, and they were allowed to continue on, perhaps through misguidance from their, their coach, their department head, uh, but they, they were allowed to continue on for 300 more hours, so they got 50% more hours than they expected. So uh, again, as unfortunate it is for that person, I, I kind of come down on the side uh, of, uh, of not feeling so badly about that because they got 50% more hiring and uh, a small payment to the Wisconsin Retirement Fund as well. So I don't think we're punishing that person, as we shouldn't. We shouldn't punish that person. So I think that it should be very clear that by saying no to this, that, that this employment ends tonight, that this, this, this employment, this program ends tonight, it doesn't continue to tomorrow. And, uh, and that's what I've got. That's my thinking on that for you, Dan. Thank you. Alderman Marshall, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I have a question, oddly enough, for the HR director on this. And, and the question being is, how might this play out if, if the council votes tonight to eliminate this position? Obviously, you still have the need. I appreciate the fact that you say you may have somebody hired within a few weeks. But based on experience, there could be a refusal of the job offer. This could be another two to four months or some scenario. How might this play out? Will we be looking to fill this position immediately? I don't think that there's going to be any need to fill a position. I believe I feel pretty good about the three candidates that are coming, uh, at which point uh, Susan Hart will come up to the mayoral assistant position uh, where she was originally. Uh, in the meantime, I, administratively, I, I will handle the channeling of, of calls and, and so forth. So the plan would be to leave it vacant for the time being? Absolutely. Alderman Gisha, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Well. And, and it's, it's great input, and thank you. Uh, however, if the council votes no on this, you don't have a choice. You have to leave it vacant. Yes. It's the council's decision. I guess I'm trying to bring it back to, to where the issue is. And the issue is the council's previous decision, and now tonight the council's decision. Um, and people might not understand a Schedule X employee is a part-time. We use them for, for uh, janitorial services, uh, lawn mowing, raking, things like that. This. Uh, and then when you reach 600 hours under statute, under state uh, statute, and I believe our uh, portion of our municipal code, the city must then start to pay in Wisconsin Retirement Fund, so it inflates a salary of $27.17 an hour, 15 cents an hour, uh, by about 11%. Um, so if people don't understand why this was important, every hour after, every minute after hour 600, we start paying. And just because a new year starts, we keep paying. Uh, once you're in the Wisconsin Retirement Fund, uh, you're in. Uh, the other uh, point of concern with me is, and I'm having a hard time understanding it, I'll be real honest with you, we, we hired a code enforcer last summer under the same premise, 600 hours, no benefits. 600 hours came and went, he went, he went. Why is that different? What broke down and what was what was the issue with this not being handled the same way we just handled another employee this way? And 50% and plus, I believe at this point, it's probably over 1,000 hours because it was 925 at the January 2nd. So it's probably close to 1,000 hours. And it's just, it's very curious to me that, that one is handled one way and one is handled another. And it's disturbing. Uh, and uh, hopefully at some point we'll have an answer to that. Why is President Borden? <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, I would have had no problem had this employee been let go just short of 600 hours. I understand you have a heavy workload. I would have supported you hiring another Schedule X employee to replace the one that unfortunately you had to lay off because the 600 hours are up. And I don't think at $27.15 an hour you would have had trouble finding a, finding a replacement. In fact, in this economy, you probably would have had them lined up outside the HR office and down the street. So I would have supported another Schedule X employee for you uh, without a question because I know the workload is there. But I just object to this person working over 900 hours. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on the motion. The motion was to put the resolution upon its passage for discussion. Alderman Ryan. Call roll. As amended, we're taking out those two whereases. So, and I vote, okay, an I vote would be to pass the resolution as amended, which would say yes to that, but taking out those two whereas's. Would say yes to what? Keeping the temporary. Keeping the temporary person. Okay. Uh, Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Clayunas? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 
Rinflesh? No. Ryan? No. Zurich? No. Vanderweel? No. For Hasselt? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? No. Decker? No. Two eyes, 12 no's. Motion fails. 2042 to be referred. Report of Committee 4, 2043 by salary and grievances. Recommending establishing the annual salary for Tim Eyrick while serving as acting police chief and passing the attached resolution. Alderman Montemayor. I move that the uh, resolution or ordinance. Res the resolution be put upon its passage. That uh, report of committee accept and adopt and put the resolution. Yes, please. Okay. Second. Second. Uh, motion was to accept and adopt the report of committee and put the resolution upon its passage. Any discussion? Alderman Gisha. <laughs> Thank you. I jumped kind of quick. Uh, just a quick question. Normally, when somebody's in that position, it's an 8%. Uh, when uh, you're in an interim position, it's an 8% salary increase. Sure. Is that accurate with this? Is this 8% over his current salary? I'm not sure. Um, that's me, by that's, that's that's how all other interims. Susan ask, Hart, can I say. ask Susan Hart to come up? Please, please, thank Susan. you. Susan. <coughs> no, it is not eight percent. We no longer have a pay plan. And so what we did is we looked at the highest pay of the highest paid captain on the force and then took it up about 4%. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Wait a minute. Attorney McLean. Uh, just to clarify, the, uh, that section of the code is still in, in place and I believe it talks about acting positions and it does talk about 8%. That's not, that was not in the non-rep pay plan. So in Alderman Gisha, would you like to amend, make that amendment to, okay, Alderman Gisha. Thank you and I appreciate Steve McLean, Attorney McLean's clarifying it because we want to try to do things by the book uh, and that would be, I'm wondering if we shouldn't send this back to salary and grievance rather than just doing the 8% now and they could do an ordinance change of salary and grievance as interest if I can make a motion to refer back to salary and so grievance. Motion second to refer back and under discussion I would like to uh, tell uh, Chief Eric it'll be fine. They'll, they'll work it out. <laughs> <laughs> you, you still have a paycheck. <laughs> okay. Any, any discussion on, on referral back to uh, salary and grievance? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Report of committee six by public protection and safety recommending forwarding document to the common council with no recommendations regarding the communication from Alamo de Mayor requesting the removal of the no parking restriction on the west side of Broden Drive from Ontario Avenue to public alley south. Is that for passage? Pardon me? Is that for passage? Well, it's, they came with no recommendations, so it's then up to the council. So I can put it on for passage then? Mm -hmm. You can put it on for okay. passage, file, whatever you'd like to do. Yes, I would like to uh, put this, uh, <clears throat> this report of committee on for passage. Second. Motion is to accept and adopt the report of committee. Any discussion on that? Alderman Rainfleisch. Uh, thank you. Just for clarification, uh, actually, in terms of the action we're taking here, um, putting upon us passage the report of committee, which says uh, no recommendation, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it seems that it's goes away. If we actually want to take action on it, we have to make a motion concurrent with the report of committee to actually do something. Um, if I may ask Attorney McLean if that's correct. Attorney McLean. Uh, I read the committee's recommendation as making no recommendation and submitting it back to the council. Apparently they couldn't decide in committee and I would assume they're looking for the council to make the decision without any recommendation from the committee. Uh, I don't know where uh, RO 3400809 is if that's attached to this committee report or not. Yes, it is. Okay. So I, I think you could act on that uh, RO uh, in light of the fact that you don't have a recommendation from the committee. Okay, so the uh, motion is to accept and adopt 2044. Please go. Oh, I'm sorry. Homer, in place. Um, lost it. 
then I would make the, uh, I guess, a concurrent motion with that to accept and adopt the port of committee uh, as to also uh, put the, the uh, RO number 340-0809, which would be to grant permission uh, upon its passage. Okay, instead of making the separate motion, you want to do that as a friendly amendment to your... Yes, friendly amendment. Okay, Through, and the second you. was to... Okay, now we got it. Both, both areas are, or both levels are covered. Any more discussion? Please call roll. Hannah? Aye. Clay Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gesha? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 2045 by Law and Licensing. Recommending denying taxi cab driver's license application number 8118 based on the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the application and based on the applicant's multiple convictions related to the licensed activity. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, is Sam Samuel Sawal here tonight? It's not here, Your Honor. Very well, please proceed. Uh, Mr. Sawal appeared before the committee on January 13th. Uh, Mr. Sawal recently got his driver's license back after numerous traffic conviction, con convictions in 2007. And uh, ba based on the fact that we weren't comfortable with him just getting his li uh, license back, we advised him to, to reapply in a year if he can maintain a clean driving record uh, and stay out of trouble for at least a year. So we decided unanimously not to grant the taxi cab driver's license at this time. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? There is none. Please call roll. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Report of Committee 9, 2046 by the Committee of the Whole recommending amending Section 2975 of the 1975 Municipal Code so as to eliminate Section 37 under B, Department of Public Works, and recreate Section 2 7 under B, Department of Public Works, and the Department of Public Works Table of Organization, and create job descriptions for the janitor vehicle and equipment manager, building and grounds manager, and traffic superintendent. The committee further recommends various changes be made in the job descriptions as outlined. Uh, Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's a mouthful to have to read. It sure is. <laughs> uh, I would uh, move that the RC be accepted and adopted and that the ordinance be put upon its passage with the four changes that the committee voted on that are correct in this document. Good. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Born? No. Bauk? Aye. Decker? No. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. Clayunas? Aye. Eight ayes, six noes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 2047, and 48. Lies over. I'm sorry, Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, before we lie over uh, number 2047, I noticed when I was going through the, uh, my packet that the job description that's attached to 2047 under where it says reports to uh, police uh, patrol shift supervisor is not consistent with what we passed at the committee of the whole. So Madam City Clerk passed out a uh, corrected, updated uh, version of the janitor uh, grade seven, and it should report to, as was said on the uh, committee of the whole document, uh, reports to patrol shift supervisor for general janitorial supervision and ultimately reports to DPW's building and grounds manager. So you can tear off the job description that is on 2047 and attach the updated version when you vote on it at the next meeting. Good point, thank you. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm relating to the 
to the same situation Alderman Bourne was talking about. It was my impression that they would be members of the union at DPW, not members of the union here at City Hall. And so we need a clarification. That was my understanding it was they were going to continue to be in the union at the DPW, and I think the way it's described here, they'll be in the union at City Hall. Okay. Bill? The uh, point uh, made, Bill, is that the uh, cl classification, the division of uh, the union they, they would belong to would be the one at Public Works, not at City Hall, and Local 1564 is City Hall? That was discussed several times in, in committees, and I tried to always clarify there's a difference between placing them under the jurisdiction of an apartment and what union they're under. Uh, I'm not sure that we have the ability to simply decide what union they go into when those unions are organized under the appropriate state uh, uh, organizations that authorize their membership. Uh, the police janitorial work has always been in what is termed the City Hall Union. Uh, we have continually advised our unions that they ought to get together and jointly revive, resolve that issue because there are several positions that seem out of whack for the work, but I've also always advised them that we need to go ahead and create the jobs for the positions that aren't in the budget, and that can be done at any time. But the postings as presented to council had the janitors doing the um, police station work in the same unit as the janitors doing the city hall work. I'm hopeful that the two units will get together and kind of make some clarifications, and that's always what I had advised them to do. Um, Anybody any more questions for Bill? Okay, hold, stay there, Bill. We have Alderman Gisha, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I received communication from a, from a City Hall 1564 worker and was told that she was told that she couldn't apply for the job, that that uh, that's up only available to the other union members. And I think there's some real confusion here uh, that uh, this this lays over, Your Honor? Or are we, are we passing this tonight? Uh, there is a, um, no, it lies over. Okay, so if we could get discussed. some of that stuff, I, I think it's important to clarify that because it doesn't make any sense. I understand that it's a union kind of internal struggle, but uh, we're still the ones who get the heat for it, so maybe we ought to unstruggle it by the next meeting. <laughs> when the council makes these decisions, the jobs are posted appropriately, and they have right. in writing who has a right and who don't. One of the interesting parts of that is the city hall unit is much more open and much more flexible with regard to hiring than what is termed the, the public works department union, which is, uh, which is more structured in terms of starting out and, and work your way up. Um, yeah. Okay, please please stay there. We might, uh, uh, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to further clarify for me too, Bill, now, as it stands right now, if this city hall janitor would want to apply to be a janitor at the police department, as it currently stands, this person couldn't bid on that job then? The 1564 requires that their, their contract indicates that all existing employees will be given consideration for the job. It's consideration. Does not mean they have a right to it by seniority or a right to it by, it very specifically says that existing employees will be given consideration for a job. It will be posted and that person certainly has the right to sign up. Okay, thank and you. Be, and be considered. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. Hold on. Does anybody else? We got two more lights shining. Does anybody else like to address Bill? I have a question. Okay. Please continue. Stay there. If I remember correctly, Mr. Bittner, 
our discussion of salary and grievance wasn't union. It was table of organization, because originally we were going to put the, the janitors for the police department in the table of organization of the police department. And then at salary and grievance, there was some, a lot of uh, discussion about that. And it was decided that they would stay in the public works table of organization. But that didn't have anything to do with the union. The, the Am I correct? The organization has every employee in the department, including myself, uh, non-unionized people, people in both units uh, are all in the table of organization. That doesn't give you a definitive uh, which union they're represented, which is another process. Okay. Next we have Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Question, uh, I guess, Department Head Bittner, if you could give us your opinion, do you have a preference of one versus the other? Does it impact or change how you operate your department? The City Hall Union is a little cheaper, <laughs> just, just as long as we, we talk about budget a little bit, a janitor position. Uh, I think some of the councilmen rightly indicated that keeping the positions under public works gave more, more flexibility. But the truth of the matter is that our public works group has to support the City Hall group a lot more. In other words, during heavy snows, the sidewalks around here are shoveled by public works unit, not department. <coughs> uh, so you're going to alleviate, you're going to put more people available for snow plowing either way. Be because right now, there's, there's not enough employees in the city hall group. So the, the, we have buildings that are open for business. In a snowstorm, you need to have safe sidewalks. You need, to, And we actually supplement that then with people who could be plowing snow. So either way, you're going to move more capability, which is, I think, what the aldermen were talking about when they said this. You'll move more capability back at the, the public works garage for, for plowing snow by giving the flexibility it talked about. Uh, but I don't think that is affected strongly by which unit they go into. My own opinion is that what we hope to have an agreement between the parties, but I think management-wise, uh, I would I would be more comfortable arguing that they belong in the city hall unit, other than if the units just kind of make some sense out of the situation themselves, because we have janitors in both units and janitors working side by side. Okay, thanks. My second question for Attorney McLean, I guess the question was raised: Do we do we have the autonomy as a council or the or as a committee to decide which union this position goes into? Uh, I don't I don't think so, Alderman Brassel. I the each, each bargaining agreement, uh, we recognize that, and both parties agree that certain categories of positions or types of jobs are in one bargaining unit or another. Uh, to be honest, I haven't looked at the two contracts on the janitors. I know there are some janitors in the city hall union. I don't know whether there are janitors also in the public works union. Uh, but uh, I don't know it's necessarily management's decision as to which bargaining unit they're in. Uh, I think if there's dispute between the unions, then there's probably a unit clarification uh, action that they can file with the state, and the state can make that decision based on what the language is in the various contracts. But uh, so, I'm sorry, is it your feeling that it's up to the employee, largely speaking? to decide which route they want to go? I mean, well, would, they, would they have the option of saying, I don't want to be in one? Know, unless it's clear in the collective bargaining agreement that a janitor has to be in this union, then you know, I don't think there's an issue. But if there's some doubt, I think it's really between the bargaining units as to which, uh, which, unit, which bargaining unit a new position goes into. So uh, I'm sorry, then just uh, following through on this whole thing then, are you saying that the bargaining agreement dictates the table of organization within each department? No. Because that's sort of what I hear you saying. No, but I, I know uh, having dealt with uh, currently that the unit clarification petition by City Hall employees, they're looking to add a number of current non-reps into their bargaining unit. And you know, so I've looked recently at the language of uh, the what constitutes membership in that union, and it's uh, city hall workers and related uh, 
workers in related uh, areas uh, uh, other than supervisory, managerial, department heads, and so forth. As I say, I haven't looked at the, uh, the language in the public works bargaining agreement as to what it says comprises the universe of public works employees in the union. So I, I, you know, I don't know if I could say this position goes in one or the other. Okay. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. I'm, now I'm really confused, Bill. <laughs> and I hate to elongate this discussion because the document is going to be held over. But we sat in this room and talked about the 09 budget by moving, saving two jobs, which I was against, mm -hmm. in DPW and moving them to be positions cleaning at the police station. That isn't the case. This is a different union. That hasn't worked out. We don't even know if we can do that. And you're saying even if those two moved, the budget amount would still be necessary because you'd have to fill the city hall slots if two people, for instance, moved out of city hall to the new police station. But it's better for the taxpayer if the people move out of city hall and go to the, to the police station, isn't it? Is it better for the ta taxpayer? You said we, it costs us less money to uh, a, in this union than the other one. In the 1564 makes about $1,000 less than a janitor down at the public works garage. That has okay. some history of why, because of the heavy equipment and the heavy cleaning and that type of stuff. We have positions available in one unit and positions being eliminated in another unit. That is not a transfer between units. That's a layoff in one unit and a job available to you in another unit. So if I could follow up, please, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So theoretically, moving pieces on a chessboard, we take two of those pieces out of this building that we're in. We shove them over to the new police station. Voila, we have two openings for this place. Correct? Other than the some of the janitor or some of the cleaners in this position are part-time and are a much lower class pay than the janitors. Okay. Run me the scenario, if you wouldn't mind, and then I'll shut up and we can, I'll talk about this during the week with you. If we have two people in 1564, which is the city hall, known as the city hall union, apply because apparently right now they're the only ones who can apply, they have Preference, preference, let's say, uh, for those positions. You move two out of here and move them over to the police station. What happens? Do the two new employees come in as as uh, as city hall union workers because it's going to be city hall cleaning jobs, uh, and actually that's better for the taxpayers because they pay, they're going to pay a thousand dollars less each. So I'm wondering how you move those chess pieces around. Okay. When I indicated that existing employees in, in 1564, as I read the language, have consideration, that does not mean they have right to the job. They do not have a right to the promotion. We've been assuming all along that within management's right to hire, we would probably hire someone whose existing full-time position losing his job than somebody who is in a part-time position, which the two people at City Hall are. We would not increase our staff force by going from a part-time to a full-time job. The janitors in, excuse me, the cleaners in 1560 floor do not have a demand on these new jobs. They have a right to be considered for the new jobs. That's a huge difference in, in, in semantics. However, one of the things we've been doing throughout this reorganization is telling people that there's position eliminations throughout the department. And we're working really hard to find you another position, but it doesn't mean you're going to get to stay in the position you're in. So when the junior people at the Public Works Department no longer have jobs, two of the jobs available are the two police station janitor positions that they can sign for and will be given consideration for. But they're in different unions. They won't be if they make that change. Internal. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, 
Yeah, Alderman Sorry. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Just clarification. When you originally started talking about adding these two positions, yeah. and I was in the, in the, the opinion that we were short of people in DPW, and that it might be a good idea to create these two positions to be janitors or cleaners at the police station. But in the event that we didn't need two cleaners or janitors, we can move one of those people back to DPW to assist in snow plowing, whatever, cleaning parks. So my original vote was it to add the two positions with the assumption that perhaps being a new building in that, maybe you don't need two people over there. And let's take, give it some try, give it six months or so. And perhaps moving one of those people back into DPW and using them more, it'd give us a little more versatility. Thank you. Okay. All one in place. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess some clarification, perhaps an, an example may uh, work. Um, if we are a manufacturing plant and we have UAW Union in the manufacturing side, but we also have ASME cleaners um, is, within the same factory, um, if as management we create a new position, it is within our right to do so, um, and um, it is the rights of the unions to sort out which position, which union that position would go underneath. Uh, so we can still create a table of organization. We can still set up where those positions fall, who they report to, uh, but it's up to the unions to, to decide you know, their, their own representation. Uh, we shouldn't be discussing necessarily uh, what should be negotiated. Uh, what, what they already have a right to, to do is something that we'd allow them to, to continue to do. But where we place them and the job duties that we have and who they report to um, and, and the questions that we have, can they come out and you know, help shelling snow? We can do that. We've already done that with the documents. Um, but the unions do what they have to do to, to figure out where the, the best, you know, there is best represented uh, for them. And there's a process that they can go through uh, if they disagree. Um, and they'll take care of that. But we still will, can create our positions um, and uh, create the job descriptions for those positions. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman, we got one more. Alderman, anything for Bill so he can leave? I just want, I want, um, yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Your Honor. I want to say it one more time in a different way, uh, pretty much what Alderman Rinfleisch just said. The janitors will work at the police station. They will be in the table of organization of public works. They will be in the union of City Hall. That's what's proposed at the right. moment. There's discussions by both unions, both feeling they belong in there unit that there's mechanisms, as I think the attorney said, to resolve. Uh, but that's it's proposed, yes. Yeah, thank you. Hold on, Bill. We got one more. <laughs> Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Bill, just uh, one thing that really appealed to me about this, and I think Alderman Bourne spoke to it earlier on, is the flexibility of being able to move these people from, from and Ed Sirk just, Alderman Sirk just mentioned as well, from if they're not needed in the police station to cutting grass to plowing snow if the scenario that Alderman Montemore just laid out actually is approved at the next council meeting, will you have any issues, or do you foresee any issues, because they're part of the 1564 union, putting them on a snowplow or moving them to a lawnmower I, because of that? I don't foresee putting them on a snowplow like you're talking about, because during snow we have a huge <coughs> movement of manpower from our plowing fleet to our building fleet. In other words, we have the, the sidewalks around here shoveled. We have a ton of work gets done by what you'd call snow plowers on the building because it's the building staff that's lacking. So when, so when you add janitors that have flexibility within the building staff, they will free up people just like you talked about. Uh, at the DPW for, for... But those particular people... It, it's a shift of people, but it's right, still free. But these money. particular two people might not be able to put on a snowplow. Is that what you're saying? They, would, they would be put on sidewalk snow plowing so that the people who do sidewalk can be on plows. All right. If, if that... Okay. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that lies over. <laughs> Matters laid over 11. <laughs> 1918, resolution number 178-0809 by Alderman Montemayor, Gisha, Hannah, and Born, approving the fiscal year 209 budget, a one-year annual action plan for the community development block grant program submission. Alderman Montemayor. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call. Alderman Verhassel. Your Honor, can I ask uh, just for a real short explanation on the $219,000 figure? If there's a certain concentration, is there a certain neighborhood being focused on with those funds, or is this spread across the city? P President Hannah? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, there is a certain uh, neighborhood that has been targeted for these dollars. Um, and specifically, Paulette might be able to address the specifics of it. Paulette? Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. It's a... Um, it's neighborhood improvements, and what it is is we're hoping that if we receive the designation from HUD for the neighborhood revitalization strategy area, that we'll be able to utilize those funds in that targeted neighborhood. If not, what we'll do is, as we've done in the past, it'll either be sidewalks, street lighting, other neighborhood improvements, could even be street work, in designated low to moderate income areas. I'm sorry, could, could you define that area? Where are we speaking? This area that you're speaking of, where exactly is it? It's roughly the Water Street neighborhood all the way up to Superior, just west of 14th and then over to, is it 9th? Okay. In the same, would that same be true with the street improvement figure? A large part of that is in that area? Um, Both the street and the neighborhood improvements? I think that's actually, the street improvements would actually be the Huron area. Okay. All right. Alderman Wagman, do you wish to speak, address Paulette or not? Um, probably. I mean. Probably? Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just one small question, Paulette. Uh, the Historic Preservation Grant, $15,000, what does that cover? Um, that'll either cover the facade work for buildings that are within the Harbor Center area. An individual or business would submit an application and then receive the funding and or for signed grants. It's those two. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Paulette. We have a motion on the floor for 1918. Please call a roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Abstain. Hannah. Aye. Clayunas. Abstain. And Meyer. Aye. 12 ayes, 2 abstentions. Motion carries. 1932, General Ordinance number 730809 by Alderman Kittleson, Verhassel, repealing subsections of General Ordinance number 10708, which granted an encroachment to Richard A. Wilkins, his heirs, and assigns upon described portions of North 13th Street and Michigan Avenue, located at 1301 Michigan Avenue in the city of Sheboygan, for the purpose of maintaining a, pa a patio area. Alderman, Mr. Kittleson's not here. Alderman Brahassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? And Montemayor. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 2049 lies over. 2050 lies over. 2051, a resolution by Alderman Gisha to have the city lift the hiring freeze in order to hire two part time, eight to ten hours each per week, janitorial staff at the Senior Activity Center. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, if you recall, the senior center budget for cleaning last year was roughly sixteen thousand dollars, fifteen, I believe, and some change. It was reduced down to seven thousand dollars. We had an outside cleaning service. It's being proposed to be brought in internally um, and hire. We're back to it. Schedule X employees, uh, eight to ten hours each week. But you'll see in big letters, no benefits paid, um, and uh, this would put us under budget. It would give us more flexibility with two people and uh, and actually uh, perhaps an improved service for the seniors in that place. Wonderful. That's what we're looking for. Thank you. 
Vice President Barnes. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would like, like to make a friendly amendment uh, to the whereas that uh, Alderman Gisha was just re reading. And uh, on that last sentence there where it says, with no benefits paid, and I would like to add not to exceed 590 hours per year, and, and then it would uh, continue on to the next whereas. 590, excuse me? Right. The, per uh, year. The, uh, the, the, the change, the amendment, is, is a good one, but it also needs to be put on, now therefore be it resolved, because the whereas's are not operational. They don't, they're not operative, I should say. The whereas resolve is the one that puts the resolution to action. So you need to uh, Add it indicate, on. yes, indicate that you would like for it to be put where it says, therefore be it resolved. Therefore be it resolved not to exceed 590 hours per year. Very good, is that okay with the second? As long as it's calendar year. Calendar year. Is that okay? That's fine. The amendment is not to exceed the amount of hours per calendar year. And the there was a, a second to that friendly amendment? Second. Second. Thank you. Was it an amendment or a friendly amendment? It was a friendly amendment. Friendly. friendly amendment. Okay. No need to act further on that then. Alderman Riffleish. Uh, thank you. Um, on the same vein, then, we really need to move the uh, no benefits statement under the whereas cause under to the... Um, be a further result. So as a friendly amendment, I offer that. Okay. That will be noted. Okay. Very good. Let's call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean? 2052 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a memo from Randy Wonderjim to Susan Hart regarding additional questions prior to preparing a wage study proposal. That will be referred to salary and grievances. 2053 is a memo from Chief Wostowski to Susan Hart regarding a tentative agreement on contract language that have been agreed upon by union and management of the Sheboygan Fire Department. That will be referred to salary and grievances also. 2054 is a committee report by the Finance Committee who met and discussed the parking reimbursement compensation, recommends removing any parking reimbursement compensation from all city employees who do not incur parking expenses and to remove the pay from compensation and classify it as reimbursement so the payment is not included in the calculation of benefits. That will be referred to salary and grievances. 2055 is a communication from Sarah Donoff Nelson property manager of the Sheboygan Regency House, requesting that the city resurface the alley, which runs parallel to Wisconsin Avenue between 9th and 10th, directly south of their property at 919 Wisconsin, as it is such a hazard because of severely cracked concrete. That will be referred to Public Works Committee. 2056 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2009 and June 30, 2010. That will go to law and licensing. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs>